uh, to all the participants, international delegates, local participants, and ministers. Uh, good morning. I would like to introduce my uh, organization. We are from the Homeless People's Federation of the Philippines. We are the national movement of informal communities uh, around uh, three major regions in the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Uh, our organization also promotes community-driven process. Uh, we promote also savings program. We promote citywide community mapping and promote also critical partnership with the government. So I will, um, my presentation will focus around the experience of the community in Coloong, Valenzuela City. The community called uh, the Rosario Compound Neighborhood Association. So this is the, the map of the communities surrounded by the waters. As a background of the community, uh, they have been living for four decades. Uh, there were 96 families around in the community. And then the land was being occupied by the communities but belongs to the private landowner. And because of the unplanned development around the, the area or in the neighborhood, uh, the water rises every year. Uh, so the, the situation of the community now, they are situated in the water uh, for so many years. And the water never subsides. So this is the challenge in, in their everyday life. And the community studied and observed that there is a two centimeter every year. Uh, the water rises two centimeter every year. And this is what communities has to cope with, aside from typhoon and flooding. So how they are coping and what are the solutions they are doing uh, in this kind of challenges? So first, community has the solution in adaptation via mitigation. So since the water levels continue to rise, the community began to fortify their homes and the area. They are asked help in the barangay chairman to construct a cement pathways so that they can connect to their houses and to the mainland. And then community built also a makeshift gauging system that shows the level of water by centimeters or feet as a way to warn the members of the possible sudden rise of water levels in the area. So this is the, the improvised warning device of the community to vacate the area, to go to the evacuation center. The second is the adaptation via assessment of vulnerabilities. In 2013, community carried out community mapping to determine the actual situations of the families, which facilitated by the Community Architects Network. Uh, and we conduct a workshop also to help communities to design their site development and their housing schemes. Because the situations, despite of the water that they are living uh, now, they still have aspiring to buy the land. So the next adaptation is via security of tenure. So as I have said, that they are living in their daily lives in the water, they still aspire to buy the land. So for so many reasons, they like to preserve the community relationship, they like to preserve the cultural value of land because it was being inherited from their grand-grandparents. So they started to mobilize savings program so they are able to purchase the land in 2014 with the water because it's not really the land, it's already the water. So the land uh, was been bought through the ACA fund, we have the Asian Coalition for Community Action Fund uh, to, to facilitate the, the direct purchase of the land. So next is the adaptation via settlement design. Given the, given the situation of the community, and because there are strong community process, a lot of stakeholders help this community, like the city government, the geodetic engineer of the Philippines, and the other NGOs to make their projects viable, considering their housing conditions. They're finding the right technology to adapt the right technology on their houses to adapt the situation. 
So because of this situation, it's very challenging. So we invite the, encourage the genetic engineer of the Philippines to help, uh, uh, to help survey the land, which is very challenging because they have to go into the water. So adaptation via advocacies and, and creations of policies. Uh, communities participate in activities of the network. So we are not only uh, networking on our own membership, but we also expand the network to different organizations in the cities. Like we have this Venezuela organization, People's Organization Network, which is also doing the citywide mapping of the informal settlements. And the outcome of mapping will be presented to the city government to push to address issues of upgrading livelihoods and others. So the concrete, the concrete uh, information gathered by the communities is very powerful to also advocate in the city. And then in the city also, they will be guided to appropriately uh, put the budget on what really the, the, the priority need of the community. So, so the community citywide mapping is very important for the community to, to advocate and create some policies in the city. And it also in, encourage a platform of stakeholders to help them address the issue, especially in these vulnerable communities. So what, CBA particip what is a CBA, community-based adaptation, mean to the local level? It is a participatory and a community-led, uh, the, the driver should be the, the community. The process is they know their own situation better than the government or other stakeholders. Community have much to lose in terms of investments, economic activities, and their homes. So before thinking of relocating these communities, we should also consider extracting uh, alternative solutions, strategies on how this community lead to an on-site upgrading rather than relocating people. Uh, mostly the experience of the local government, if the community has be visibly shown that they are in danger, they are up to, to relocate communities in a distant relocation. But the challenge is, are they also taking into consideration to look for another options rather than bringing the communities far away from the city where the economic activities are also a problem. Next is uh, mobilizing resources of communities. It is important that communities should give their stake in adaptation strategies. This is one way to become resilient and this demonstrate their capacities. Civics is a strategy to strengthen their communities. The role of women is very important in the savings program in the community. So, CBM means it is a partnership with the government and other stakeholders. Adaptation is more effective when supported by the local government and other stakeholders because of the work that entails. It requires more sustainable strategies to address the effects of and impacts of disaster. With this, it requires more study, research, funding at the community level. As we said, adaptation requires strong governance system, both community and government, as well as to address climate change and mitigate its effects by, under, by undertaking proactive solutions, such as citywide community mapping of the informal settlements. Similar to the program Reducing Poverty at the City, national and the global scale. Climate change should also be seriously addressed in the same way so that community will not remain as poverty and extended to, uh, to affected communities would be more effective, strategic, and then in scale. So for us, uh, this is the initiative of the, of the community and we believe that if the community will be involved in the, in the whole process of the adaptation in addressing the climate change, it's more sustainable with the support of the local government and other stakeholders. Thank you.